What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'll be taking a Security Plus 701 practice test. This will be my first taste of the 701 exam ever since I passed the 601 a few months ago. And the main reason why I wanted to take a practice test from the 701 version is to really see the differences between the 601 and the 701, kind of get a taste of the new questions that are introduced with the 701 exam and the new objectives as well. So with that being said, if you're new to the channel, please drop me a like for the YouTube algorithm and also subscribe to the channel and join the family. We're on our way to 50,000 subscribers. My name is Ben and I make videos about cybersecurity and my journey throughout the industry. So if you're interested in that, go ahead and subscribe. And with that being said though guys, let's go ahead and hop into my computer right now and see what the 701 version has to offer. All right, so welcome to the inside of my computer. We have Exam Compass pulled up right here, which is my go-to website when it comes to practice tests for really any CompTIA certification. We'll go ahead and scroll down to the uh, 701 practice tests right over here. And usually how Exam Compass organizes this is each of these practice tests cover an objective within the actual exam. Throughout this video, I'll be taking a couple different questions from each of these practice tests just so I can get a diverse pool and taste of the 701 one questions and hopefully run into some of the newer objectives based off of this let's hop into maybe one in the so this 15 we'll do one from the first five we'll do one from the second five and then do, we'll do one from the last third we'll go ahead and go with number three here mime specification extends the email message format beyond plain text enabling transfer of graphics audio and video files over the internet mail system uh, the SMIME is an enhanced version of the MIME protocol that enables email security features uh, by providing encryption, authentication, message integrity, and other related services. What really stands out to me is the S in front of the more secure version. Um, usually I can see this sort of naming convention in place when I maybe think of another protocol like HTTP or an, an HTTPS. Um, so HTTPS is the more secure version of HTTP, and it just has that S added on. So I don't quite remember exactly the version of MIME, but from that kind of naming convention and that kind of, you know, the way things work um, in terms of these protocols, uh, that makes sense to me for the S to be in front and for this to be considered the more secure version of MIME. So we'll hit true for this question because it makes sense based off of my uh, logic with other protocols. So a lot of times when you're taking the Security Plus, you'll have to base off of your answer, maybe not off of your knowledge itself, because I didn't know a whole lot about the MIME protocol. But I do recall using, you know, just logic and, and my, you know, my previous knowledge from other protocols that this answer is probably correct. So we'll hit true for that. Uh, what is the name of the network protocol that enables secure file transfer over SSH? File transfer clearly indicates file transfer protocol. So we'll be looking at answers that have FTP inside of it. TFTP, FT, SFTP, uh, FTPS. Um, I'm going to go secure file transfer protocol. We'll go with SFTP just because similar to like before, it's that same naming convention. And I do remember the secure version of FTP being SFTP. So, uh, nothing new quite yet in terms of this practice test. Um, looks like this practice test may be focused on protocols, which we've seen on the 601 version. SFTP is an extension of the FTP protocol that adds support for the SSL TLS encryption. A lot of times when you're taking the security plus, some questions may help you answer other questions, just like in this case right here. Previous question looks like it was talking about the SSH that the SFTP uh, enables. And now this one, this next question is going over uh, a different type of encryption, which is the SSL and TLS. So I'm gonna hit false right here. Um, and then we'll go ahead and check our answer. So I'll be doing three questions from each of these practice tests. I don't wanna do the entire thing because I'll probably bore you guys to death and just to get a taste. Um, so we'll go ahead and skip to the last question. Uh, I'm not gonna answer any of the other questions. I'm just gonna submit it and see if we got the first three questions right. So I'll go ahead and cut right here. All right, so let's go ahead and hit finish here and see our answers. Looks like we got the first three right. I was correct about the MIME uh, assertion with the, the S in front, meaning the more secure version, which makes sense. Same with the SFTP, and then uh, same as well with the, uh, the inference of just um, seeing the other previous answer was SSH, and now this one is saying SSL. 
so it's going to be false. So we got those three questions right. Not too surprised just because this, these questions were found on the 601 as well because it did cover uh, the different protocols, the naming conventions, and stuff like that. We'll go ahead and choose our second one here. We'll go with maybe, let's go with eight. Which of the answers listed below refers to a security vulnerability that enables inserting malicious code into input fields such as search bars or login forms um, to execute unauthorized commands on a database? First thing that comes to mind is going to be SQL injection. When you see search bars or login forms on websites and also database, it's going to be SQL injection just because SQL is the querying language that's used to query into databases to draw out uh, certain data. So this makes the most sense. This is something that you would also see on the 601, um, relatively straightforward. Uh, which of the following indicates a SQL injection attack attempt? This one might be a little bit harder just because I'm a little bit rusty on my SQL. I don't think it's number one just because it looks like it's deleting something and SQL injections don't really look to delete stuff. It looks to, you know, draw out valuable information. Looks like this one is selecting everything from the user's table where a username uh is alice and password i'm not too sure what this querying uh part right here this sort of command right here is doing this is the part where i probably have to brush up on my sql drop table item db uh no so one and three i'm crossing off my list so this is selecting the same uh, users where but instead of username it's using email and the password is also something different uh from here this is also using an and and a statement that's using or when it comes to SQL injections I'm rusty and I'm not too sure what exactly gives it away since SQL injections are used to draw out valuable information because this one has a specific user that it's targeting we'll go ahead and just choose number two here but it could be between two and four I'll have to look back on my SQL and, and, and see exactly what SQL injections look like and what kind of gives it away that's something that I would do if I was studying for the 701 or the 601 exam let's move on to number three here which of the answers listed below describe the characteristic of a cross-site scripting attack exploits the trust of a user's web browser uh, the trust a user's web browser has in the website um, i do remember the cross-site scripting attack involving web browser so we'll go with we'll go with number one to have our uh, one of our three a malicious script is injected into a trusted website user's browser executes attacker script exploits the trust a data uh, a website has in the user's web browser a user is tricked by an attacker into submitting authorized Web, web request we'll go with this and we'll go with this uh, malicious script is injected into a trusted website and it's executed by the user's web browser okay a user is tricked into by an attacker into submitting another okay so that's like more of the general explanation and those three seem uh, pretty solid to me um so let's go ahead and skip to the end for this practice test and see how we did all right so we're on the last question here let's go ahead and hit finish and see how we did on the first three questions looks like we got the first two right um this guess right here was correct a lot of times when you're taking the security plus exam, you'll kind of boil it down to at least two of the answers. And then from there, you make sort of a 50-50 educated guess. And that's what I did for the second question. And, and good to see that it turned out correct. Last one looks like I missed. I missed one of the questions or one of the answers here. I got the first two right. Yeah. So I guess I just missed this question. I chose this one instead. Uh, so it looks like we got one out of th uh, two out of three correct here. And we missed one of the answers here. So I want to see some questions that I haven't seen before. So so I think this kind of looks new. So let's see. Which of the terms listed below is used to describe a foundational level of security configurations and settings required to safeguard a system? Sounds like secure baseline just based off of the description. Installing mobile apps from trusted sources instead of third-party application stores decreases malware-related relatively basic information. Data on a lost or stolen mobile device can be erased by remote wipe uh, which of the following answers refers to mobile or oh, maybe this is like a mo more of a mobile mobile security objective uh, might be new to 701 uh, separate controls over the user and enterprise data separate controls over the user and enterprise data not resource provisioning not content management seems like some form of uh, storage segmentation. So those are the first four questions in this objective. Let's move on and skip to the end and see if we did well. All right, so we're at the last question here for practice test 15. Let's go ahead and finish and see if we got these questions right. Looks like we got the first four questions right that we answered. Um, this one was relatively straightforward. They're pretty easy questions. I think this objective is uh, new or relatively new uh, to the 701 uh, because it involves a lot of uh, mobile related questions. 
So that might be new. So that is going to conclude today's video. But what I've seen from these practice tests is that there's not a whole lot that's going to be different from the 601 to the 701. You might be introduced to a few new objectives with the 701 exam. You might have different content, but in terms of the overall exam itself, it's going to be relatively similar to the 601. And in terms of difficulty, it seems like it's just going to be the exact same as the 601 exam in terms of difficulty. So nothing to be alarmed of and nothing to be afraid of in terms of whether to take 601 or should I have taken the 601 instead of the 701. All you need to do is really have a disciplined and regimented study plan, um, have a good technique that matches your learning style. And I guarantee you guys, if you have those two things, you will be able to pass the exam no matter what Security Plus version you take. That being said though, guys, if you enjoyed the video and found some value from it, please drop me a like. It really helps out my channel. And if you're new, Go ahead and hit subscribe and join the family. We're on our way to 50,000 subscribers. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.